VS Code, the cross-platform code editor that supports Python IntelliSense, debugging, Git integration, extensions galore, and cloud deployments for your application has some new features this month. Let's jump into the latest. We're making it easier for you to create your development environment by giving you access to what is normally done via the terminal and making it available in your command palette. I use Control Shift P to open my command palette. You can also go to your hamburger menu, go down to view and select the command palette. If you happen to use Control P, which opens your file explorer, you just start your search with a greater than sign. An environment in Python is the context in which a Python program runs that consists of an interpreter and any number of installed packages. Between your global, local, virtual, or conda environments, Python and VS Code has added features to make it more intuitive to manage your dependencies the way you want. You can type create environment to get the feature, or you can go through the select interpreter user flow like I'm doing here. You can choose a virtual environment named .vinv or conda. Then select your Python interpreter. These are the options I have available to me, either through the Microsoft Store or because I've installed them locally. Your requirements.txt file may hold all of your project's dependencies. Select this file and your virtual environment will automatically install these dependencies once it's created. Now you can see the name of my terminal showing that it's activated. My Python version is as expected and so are my dependencies. Triggered Breakpoints is now a feature in the debugging experience in Python. I'm using the VS Code Fast API tutorial to show off this feature. We recommend it because the accompanying documentation does a great job showing the way Python and VS Code can help your development experience. I'm navigating to two declarations of item underscore ID, and I'm adding breakpoints on line 35 and 39, where the ID is set depending on whether or not one has already been created for the item. And then I add a triggered breakpoint on line 51. This will be what is returned after the breakpoint is hit. This is available in all languages, but we're excited for its Python use cases. I navigate over to my fast API debugger and run. My application starts and I'll open it in the browser and I'm navigating to Docs so I can access Swagger, a way to add inputs to my API without having to create a front-end solution. Now let's add some demo data to this application. I'm going to put apples and a quantity and then execute this API call. The program stops on line 39 and I can see the apples that I've submitted and the quantity that I've set from Swagger. Now that it has this input, I'll let the application continue and I can try it again. Let's update the quantity. It hit line 35 because the apples already have been assigned an ID and we see the quantity was updated even though it stopped on line 35 and the quantity is updated after line 35. Now I can continue adding features to my application and debugging those features with triggered breakpoints. Jupyter's built-in variable view is visible at the bottom of the Run and Debug panel. To use this new feature, you'll need to enable Notebook Experimental Variables view in your settings. The Jupyter extension is one of our first class extensions. We prioritize its support for our data-driven Pythonistas to step through their code. I've cloned the Zero to Hero Jupyter Notebooks in VS Code repository, and I've already activated my virtual environment. You can also open this repo with a dev container. We've included those settings for you or open it with GitHub code spaces and run this in the cloud right from GitHub. Once the cell has finished evaluating, I can navigate to my run and debug panel to see my notebook variables. Check out everything Microsoft is doing to support Python developers at aka.ms forward slash Python. Happy coding.